Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes before we get started to make sure everyone is able to sign on who wants to join us live today. I would love to know where everyone's joining from. If you wouldn't mind popping in the chat um, where you are. I'm in Ireland. Um, it's about 6 p.m. here, which is nice in the summer because it's bright and sunny. Uh, it's a beautiful day today, finally. And um, so let's see, we have Georgia, Texas, Oxford, Oregon, North Carolina, Virginia, New York, Norway, Canada, <laughs> Florida, Seattle, New Jersey, St. Louis, Ontario. Amazing, so great to have people from all over. Neri, hi Annie. <laughs> um, Northern Germany, Brenda from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you guys all so much for joining today. Um, I'm so, so happy to have you here. Thanks for joining me on this Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, depending where you guys are. Um, and thank you so much for participating. It's so cool to see where everyone's from. I would also love to know um, who here has painted with watercolors before? Are you brand new? Is this your very, very first time painting? Are you a tried and true like painting forever and you just wanted to set aside a little time for some enjoyment? Um, let me know in the chat there where you're at. If you've painted before or if you haven't painted before, everyone is definitely welcome. Um, let's see, beginner, not my first time, but definitely beginner, third course with you. Welcome back, I'm Emily. Um, getting back into after many years ago, Love that, rekindling creativity, beautiful. I painted before, but still beginner. Oh yeah, you made it, awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Painting, painted before, but it's been a while. So getting back into it. Took your six week class earlier this year, still practicing, wonderful. I'm new to painting, but my aunt's an artist and I love it. Love art galleries, would like to try it myself. Amazing, yeah, I think anyone can enjoy painting, so. I am so happy to have you guys all here. And whether this is your first class or your millionth class, um, just try and approach it the same way. You know, just try and think of it as a relaxing hour to just kind of step away from everything going on in the world and, um, and don't worry too much about how it turns out. I really want you guys to focus on enjoying the process of painting. Um, it's just a nice break at the end of the day and we're mixing colors and we're having fun. There's no pressure <laughs> to create, you know, a masterpiece here. Um, I think a lot of times when, when we let go of trying to control, especially with watercolors, <laughs> that's when we have these like happy, wonderful accidents and happy, wonderful um, creations because you can't fully control watercolors. It's part of the beauty of it. All right, so we'll kind of jump in, guys. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself to start. I'm Lauren. Um, I'm a watercolor artist and illustrator and the owner of Lauren Taylor Creates. In case you didn't know me, uh, I'm originally from California, but I now live in Ireland. And I've been a professional artist for about eight years now. Um, but I've painted my whole life. It's something I've always loved to do. I'm self-taught, which means I didn't go to art school, but I did take different workshops and classes over the years. Um, I love learning from other artists and creatives and I just think it's such a cool way to gain new skills and stuff. So it's part of the reasons why I love to teach now is to kind of like turn that around and share what I've learned and kind of the style that I've ad adopted and developed and kind of pass it on to you guys. So I typically like to paint things that are inspired by nature. So florals, botanicals, landscapes, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, you might have seen on my Instagram and in one of my emails, we're painting beautiful cone flowers today. They're lovely and bright and just feel really summery, which was kind of the goal for this class was to paint something just really, really cheerful. So we're just focusing on kind of simple shapes, mixing up some colors. If you don't have the exact supplies or colors um, that I'm using, that's totally okay. Um, ask away in the chat if you want recommendations for 
alternatives that you should use and I'll be happy to um, to kind of guide you guys through it. So let me switch my cameras here and crack a window. It is so warm. <laughs> um, can everyone see my desk? Yes, awesome. And can everyone still hear the music? The way the, the music kind of works is that I can't hear it. <laughs> um, but hopefully you guys can. So if it's ever too loud or annoying, like if a really intense song comes on, <laughs> just let me know. But I think the um, the Spanish guitar is so beautiful to listen to while while painting. I think it's just like a really nice vibe. Okay, so like I said, we're painting these lovely, lovely cone flowers. Um, so I will be breaking it down into kind of small sections uh, for you guys to watch and paint along with. Um, and if you have any questions along the way, feel free to pop them into the chat and I'll be happy to answer questions as we go. And then if you want to ask me any questions at the end as well, um, can do a bit of a Q and A then, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about this painting, painting in general, um, my courses, my artwork, anything you guys want to chat about. Julie, if you're still not able to see, uh, if your screen's still black, or if anyone's ever having like technical issues, try just logging off and, and coming back on, and that might help. And at the very end of the class as well, I will share um, with you guys about a little special discount that I'll be offering. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. It's been a little while since I painted live with you guys. Just a little sip of water there. All right, so to get started, I wanna kind of dive into my supplies. So the supplies that I like to use, and like I said before, if you don't have the exact same setup as me, that's totally okay. Use what you have. No need to, you know, go out and buy all new stuff. I'm using a nine by 12 cold press watercolor block um, by Arches. I love the texture of their paper, especially their cold press paper. It has this really lovely um, kind of texture to it. And uh, it's, it's a block, which means that all sides are glued down. So you can see all the sheets of paper are glued on all four sides with this little section here that is bare. And what that does is it helps hold the paper down nice and taut while we're painting. It's great if you're covering the whole sheet of paper, um, painting really, really wet. You know, if you just had a loose sheet of paper, it would start to warp and move around. So it means it holds it down and you wait until it's completely dry. And you can take a palette knife or the back of a bar knife and just slice your top sheet of paper off. Um, and it will end up like this. But we aren't painting all the way to the very edges today. So there's no need to worry about your paper warping or bending too much while we create this paper or painting because we're staying relatively in the center. I have my paint palette here. I have a little spray bottle um, and I use this to kind of wake up my paints. Um, I let my paint actually dry out. I usually squeeze my, I use tubes of paint and I squeeze it out into my palette. Typically, like I try to do it at night if I'm painting the next morning, uh, I let them dry out completely. And then I just kind of wake them up with my spray bottle. Like so. So that just kind of wakes them up. If you're using pans of paint, kind of like these, so half pans or pans, or when they're they come already dried out like this, I highly recommend spray spritzing or spraying your your paint with the spray bottle, um, five to ten minutes. Give it like a nice good dosing before you get started. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can take your brush and just get it wet and run your brush over the color and it will have the same effect as the spray bottle. Um, pans of paint are typically much drier than paint that comes out of a tube. 
And so you might find that if you don't do that, your colors can be quite d dull. Like they don't, you're not able to quite pick up enough paint to make them really bright or impactful. So that's just a little tip to kind of help wake your paint up and make it more ready to work with. The brush I'm using today is a size 10 round brush. Um, this one's by Silver Black Velvet. Um, I've been using their brushes for years and I really, really love um, this brush. It comes to a really nice point, which allows me to do fine details, um, but also can hold quite a bit of pigment in, in it. And um, it's just so easy, easy, easy to work with. I also have here two glasses of water. Um, I use two, one is for um, dirty water, I say, and one's for clean water. So my dirty water glass is for rinsing my brush in between colors um, to really get the color out of my brush. The other glass I'll use as like my clean water when I want to add water onto my paper and to create these like really soft blends or to make sure that my brush is really, really clean um, before going into a new color as well. So I would recommend if you want to take a second to grab a second glass of water if you don't already have two. Um, any glass or cup will do. Watercolors typically are pretty good about um, coming out. I just use some, some lovely little glasses that I bought recently but um, any type of glass is fine. And then the last thing that I have in my setup here are my paper towels. Um, I use paper towels, or you can use like a really absorbent sponge um, to control the amount of liquid that's on your brush. So you'll see I'm constantly dabbing my brush off in between um, mixing my colors before I'm adding color to my paper, anything like that. I'm using paper towels a lot. Um, so like I said, you can use paper towels, a dish towel, um, a really absorbent sponge, anything like that is suitable. Questions about the supplies I'm using before I dive into the colors and stuff that we're going to be mixing up for class today? Megan asks, will you give us a list, list after class? Yes, um, I have a list on my website. You can download my material list. It's all there. Um, I'll have Esther link um, in the chat there where you guys can download it. We'll also make sure to include it in the, um, in the email we send out tomorrow with the recording of the class. Yeah, it, it is nice to, it, it's great. There's a link there for anyone who's in the States to Blick um, that has the entire list. Um, and it also lists all the different supplies as well in case you wanna shop around and get stuff elsewhere. I'm using tubes of Winsor & Newton professional watercolors, um, but you can also use their Cotman line. Um, it's slightly cheaper and I've tested it out and it works really, really nicely as well. So those are kind of the two brands that I recommend for, for watercolors. But again, there's heaps like Daniel Smith is really great. Um, and then there's loads of other ones too. So it just takes a little playing around to see what you like. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with mixing up our lovely colors for today. The colors that we're going to be using are alizarin crimson, cadmium red, quinacridone magenta, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow pale, cobalt blue, and ultramarine. And Esther has popped the list there in the chat. Thank you, Esther. Um, and if you don't have these exact colors, that's totally okay. I'll try it and be vigilant about telling you guys other colors that you can use. But basically you need a red, a yellow, and a blue and a pink or purple if you have that as well. 
right, so go ahead and get your brush wet. We just wanna make sure all the bristles are nice and saturated. And the first color that we're gonna start with is going to be our lovely pink for our petals. For that, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be using my quinacridone magenta. Um, I'm just gonna use this color straight. I'm not mixing it with anything. If you don't have quinacridone magenta, I'd recommend using a shade of pink or purple. Um, that is kind of the, the color of the, the cone flowers have these lovely like pinky purple petals. Um, so if you have like a pink or purple shade, that would suit as well. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and use my brush to scoop five brushfuls of water onto my mixing area. And at this point, if you're painting along with me or you're planning on painting along, go ahead and get started um, and follow along. So I'm using my brush to kind of scoop the water. So I'm just getting it dripping wet and dropping it into my mixing area. And you can even use the edge to just kind of scrape that excess water off into your mixing area. Three, four, five. I'm then going to come into my quinacridone magenta and load up my brush with color. Watercolor brushes are not Precious, I am very, I'm not really a precious person anyways. I'm quite rough, so don't, don't be afraid to really dig in there, especially if your paint is dry like mine. Um, if you just freshly squeeze your paint out, like if you're using tubes and you just squeeze it out before class, take care of it more because it's really, really sticky at that point. Um, but if it's dry or if you're using pans, like I showed you earlier, um, go ahead and really dig into your color. The consistency we're looking for here is going to be kind of a medium consistency. So we want it to kind of move around like milk or juice. Um, we don't want it too watery and we definitely don't want it opaque. So for me, that's pretty good. You can see that as I'm moving it around, it's just kind of moving very, very slowly. Yeah, this color is so, so pretty. It's really versatile. Um, the quinacridone colors, this is quinacridone magenta and quinacridone gold, and I love them. All right, so I'm happy with that kind of mixture of my magenta. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off really, really well. All right, and then in a new mixing area, I am going to drop three brush bowls of water. There's one, two, three. And the next color we are going to mix is going to be our orange. And this is going to be um, for the center of our flowers. Barra says, my color just pools in the middle. It doesn't spread out well. That's totally okay. That could be because of your palette. If your palette's new, um, sometimes it has kind of a funny texture to it. Or if um, you know, you're know you not using kind of the whole, if you're not using loads and loads of water to fill up the whole area, sometimes the paint um, just kind of sticks in one area. So to mix up our orange, I'm going to use my cadmium yellow pale and my cadmium red. And I just added paint like not too long ago. So this one's still a little bit soft, I can see. So I'm just being a little bit more careful with how I uh, pick it up. And then I'm just gonna drop that in. Again, you can use the edges to scrape the paint off of your brush. Okay. 
And I'm going to add in the cadmium red. Into my yellow until we get a lovely orange color. Might just add a touch more yellow. That orange turned out a little bit more on the scarlet side. There we go. It's looking a little better. And again, for this mixture as well, we are looking for kind of a medium, like milk or juice kind of consistency for our paint. So we don't want it to be really opaque. Um, and we don't, you don't want it to be really, really faint or soft um, or too like watery. Sometimes there are cases like, you know, there are times that you do want these kind of different textures. You know, sometimes you do, if you're looking for like a really, really soft color um, to achieve like a lighter color, you'd add and use more water. Um, if you want something to be a bit richer and darker, you know, you would add less water and more paint. So there are times that you're not gonna use this kind of medium consistency, but this is kind of your base for, for watercolor painting. So I'm just rinsing my brush off really well. And in a new area, I'm going to mix up what I'm calling a black. Um, this is kind of the color. If you look at a photo of cone flowers, they kind of have the, like a shadow to them, like this kind of dark underside in between their center, which has kind of little fine points on it. Um, they have this really kind of dark, dark kind of underside. And in between those, those points, it, it is quite dark. Um, I typically don't actually paint with black. I do have, I have like three different shades of black <laughs> on my palette. Um, right now they all look the same, but they are actually quite different. Um, but I can't quite remember the last time I used them because I very much prefer mixing up my own colors now. Even here I have like a, a sap green that I have not used in probably several years because um, I very much prefer to mix up my own green. I just think that by mixing the colors, it gives you a much richer um, tone. It creates loads of interest in it because you're not having this flat, um, solid color. Instead, you have these kind of lovely hints of other colors that kind of come through. So for our black, I'll use quotes for that because it doesn't actually turn out black, but it's a very dark color. I'm going to scoop three brush bowls of water. I should probably use the clean water. Three. So you can see how quickly our dirty water has turned. Um, it's about to turn a much uglier color than this lovely orange right here. And so our black dark color is going to be a mix of alizarin crimson, ultramarine, and a bit of, just a little bit of the cadmium yellow pale. So I'm first going to come into my alizarin crimson. This is a lovely, lovely kind of um, burgundy red. Let's my brush off. And come into my ultramarine blue. And for this, we want more blue than crimson. And you'll start to see how this turns into a really dark purple. A touch more blue. Definitely want it to be more on the blue side than the kind of like pinky purple side. We want more of a blue purple. Make sure it's all mixed really well. Rinse my brush off. Just gonna dab it off to control the amount of liquid I'm now gonna be adding to it. And I'm now just going to um, add just a touch of my 
cadmium yellow pale. Purple and yellow are complementary colors, which means that they kind of neutralize each other. So when I add the yellow to the purple, it will bring it closer to like a gray rather than it being this like vibrant purple. So we really just want to add a little bit at a time because um, I do want to kind of keep that purple tone. I don't want to completely cancel it out. Uh, so you can see I'm, I'm only really uh, have paint on the tip of my brush here. And kind of add that in. Add a little more blue. Probably went a little overboard with the alizarin crimson at the start, so now I have to add loads of blue to cancel it out. That's okay. But just kind of dulled it down just a bit. Add a little more. There we go. So I'm calling it black. It's not black. But for the sake of the class, <laughs> for the sake of our painting, we're using it as a black. And I think this color is so much more interesting and beautiful than black is. So <laughs> I'm gonna rinse my brush off really well. And then we're gonna mix our green, which is going to be our last color that we're mixing really quick. Does anyone have any questions about any of these colors? For the, um, for the green, I am going to scoop four brushfuls of water. I'm gonna scoop from my clean water glass because our dirty water glass has um, so much paint and color in it now. So one, two, three, four. Are you ever worried about going or about um, tainting your paints with darker colors when mixing. I'm not sure what you mean by tainting the paints. Do you mean if I like add paint, like if I get a dark, say a dark, like I have a few little dark spots here in my yellow, is that what you mean? Yes. Um, no, I'm not worried when I, you know, you, these end up getting quite messy, uh, kind of as you paint. Um, later when it dries back out, what you can do with a clean brush is just kind of go over it and kind of wash off the, um, the top layer that is kind of muddied. The yellows, a lot of times, especially if I'm mixing green, they'll kind of turn green because <laughs> I'm not always super careful about washing my brush off in between picking up the colors. So sometimes there'll be heaps of blue on top of it. Um, so what I'll do is later when it's all dried out, I'll just take a clean brush and just kind of scrub it away. Do you prefer these paints um, you're using from the tubes? Yes, I pers personal preference is definitely a personal preference, but I do prefer to paint to pan paint. It's just not quite as dried out. Um, I find it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so I scooped out four brushfuls of water onto my mixing area. And the next color we're gonna mix up is this lovely shade of light green. So I'm going to come into my cadmium lemon. This is a bit of a brighter yellow than our cadmium yellow pale. Again, if you don't have the, the exact shades of color that I'm using, you know, any yellow and blues will do. Um, they might be slightly different colors than what I have, but still turn out lovely. All right, rinse the brush off. Keep rinsing it off in your dirty glass. We don't want to taint our clean glass just yet because we'll need that later on. If your glasses of water end up getting icky throughout the class, um, feel free to rinse them out and, and just get fresh water if you notice that it's, it's gotten quite icky. Same with your paper towels. If your paper towels get really, really saturated, um, they stop absorbing water. So it's good to keep an eye on your paper towels. So now I'm just dropping in some cobalt blue. 
This is a bit of a lighter, brighter blue than our ultramarine that we used for our dark shade. Looking for a nice vibrant green. Again, we kind of want this medium consistency. Rinse my brush off and then I'm going to add just a touch of cadmium red to my green. And same with adding the yellow to the purple. Red and green are complementary colors, which means that the red is just going to neutralize the green a little bit. Um, I find that if I just paint with the green like this, it tends to be very, very vibrant, um, a bit neon. And so I like to add just a tiny bit of red, which kind of dulls it ever so slightly so it looks a little bit more natural, like it's in nature. So I'm just going to take the tip of my brush to pick up. I just picked up a very, very, very small amount. It's always better to start with a little bit um, instead of adding heaps. If you ever know, like if you drop it and you've already, you know, you're like, oh crap, I have a lot on my brush. Just stop and rinse your brush off. You don't want to be like adding adding loads if you add too much it will turn brown if that happens just add more yellow and more green or sorry more yellow and more blue <laughs> to mix up your green so i literally just added a very small amount of the red um i don't want it to look brown i do just kind of want it to ever so slightly slightly dull down i'm gonna rinse my brush off really, really well. Rinsed off in the dirty glass. I'm gonna rinse off the clean glass, dab off, and get started. All right, so we can kind of dive into our painting now that we have the four colors that we're going to be using. Um, any questions before I start painting? Awesome. If you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. And thank you guys so much for participating as well. Like I said at the start, it's really, really nice to have you guys chatting and hanging out with me in the chat because it feels like you're actually here instead of me just painting in my studio by myself, <laughs> talking to myself. Um, so thank you guys <laughs> for being in the chat and for, um, for participating. It's so much more fun. <laughs> Uh, so happy to have you guys here too. All right, let's get started. So I'm just gonna move this over. All right, so I'm gonna start, actually before, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with this left flower first. Um, so we're gonna start up at the top with our orange, our dark, going to our pink. And then we're going to do our right flower and then add a little bit of greenery at the end. All right, so like I said, we wanna make sure our brush it's really, really clean now. Dab it off. So we're controlling how much water we're adding to our paint and to our paper now by dabbing our brush off on our paper towels because we have our paints already at the consistency that we want them at. We don't wanna be adding loads of water to them now. Sometimes if your paint's been sitting for more than a couple minutes, the colors might start to split uh, so I just kind of give it a bit of a stir to reawaken it. So just picking up some of the orange, I'm tapping off a little bit of the excess and that just gives me a little bit more control with my brush. I'm gonna start, like I said, with this left flower. So I'm starting a little bit left of center on my paper, kind of up near the top and I'm going to start creating a dome shape. Like so. So you should have something kind of round around the top. Not worried about filling in. I'm not creating a full circle. I'm just kind of creating this rounded top 
shape. And one of the things I love about painting flowers is that they are not perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. So, you know, we're not looking for a perfectly round shape. We're never looking for perfectly shaped petals. That's just not actually natural. I'm gonna bring the color down to kind of a straight line, like so. So you should have what looks kind of like half a sun. I'm gonna rinse my brush off, rinse it off in the clean water. Again, I'm going to dab it off. I'm gonna come into my dark color, stir it up to make sure it's all nice and mixed. I'm going to dab it off, some of that excess. And then I'm gonna come at the bottom of the orange. And while that's the orange is still wet, I'm going to drop some of this dark color in. And I'm just going to kind of round out the bottom ever so slightly. Let me just pull my camera in here so you can see a bit better. So you can see it's I no longer perfectly kind of straight. I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a roundish shape. And then some of your dark will kind of blend up into your orange. And that's actually kind of what we're hoping for. That's one of the beautiful things about working with watercolors is creating these lovely soft blends. And then I'm just going to kind of tap in some color into the orange with the very tip of my brush just to create some little shapes. I actually forgot to add there's some little pokey bits in the orange so I'm just gonna rinse my brush off dab it off and then I'm gonna use with the tip of my brush I'm just while the orange is still a bit wet I'm just going to pull up to create some of these little spikes these little pokey so you can see it's not, so if you didn't get kind of a perfect shape, this is a great way to kind of play with it and correct it. And it's just real subtle to kind of create that lovely cone flower shape. All right, pull this back. Rinse my brush off really, really well going to come into my magenta and start to do my petals. Again, just tapping off some of the excess on my paper towels and I'm going to start on the left. So up kind of at the edge of the bottom, I'm going to start with my first petal. So I'm just using the tip of my brush to pull out and then from the tip of the flower I'm pulling back to create and filling it in to create a, a petal shape. And I'm touching the orange and the dark and that will kind of cause some of the pink to, if it's still wet, if it's all still wet, that will cause some of the colors to kind of blend and bleed together. And um, again, I, I love that personally. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of encourage it. All right, I'm gonna do a longer petal next to the one I just created. So again, I'm just with the tip of my brush creating a nice line. And then you can kind of start back up at the top and create a line next to it to kind of round out and create that lovely long petal shape and fill it in. Keep going around. Picking up more paint as you go if needed. I'm just making them a little bit longer as we get round towards the center. Can even pick up just a little bit of water. Kind of create like a softer, lighter color by watering it down a little bit. 
even leaving like little gaps of white occasionally um, that just can kind of make it look like highlights a bit you can tell it's warm here because my paint um, my center dried quite quickly so don't want to work too slowly um, get some lovely lovely blends And I'm gonna do one more kind of short one. This one's kind of you know behind a little bit. Lovely. So you should end up with some petals like so. Just again using the tip of my brush to create the petal shapes. We can take a little bit, just with the very tip of your brush, some of our dark color and add some shadow, drop some shadow in, just to create some separation between some of these petals. Don't go overboard with that, but just kind of drop in a little line and let it spread out and move around naturally. And that just creates a little bit of interest. I'm gonna rinse my brush off really, really well, rinse it off with a clean water. And while this is still wet, I just kind of want to soften some of these petals and let them blur out. Um, so to do that, I'm going to wet the paper next to where I want to blend it. I'm not going to touch the color just yet. So I'm just wetting the white paper and then I'll wiggle my brush up to the tip of the petal that I want to kind of blend. And you can see by touching it, then it just allows the wet paint to spill out. If your painting's already dry, then it's not going to, to do that. So I'm gonna do that again on this right side. So again, I'm just wetting the paper and then I'll wiggle my brush towards where it's still wet. If you have a petal that turned out like really wonky and you're not really happy with the shape of it, the shape of it, this is a great way to just kind of like erase it is by just softening it. Like so. So we have some lovely kind of softness on those petals. And then going to the last thing I'm going to do for this flower right here before we move on is going to add the stem. So my green's been sitting for a little while, so I'm just gonna stir it back up to reawaken it. I could even, I could kind of see the yellow had kind of come to the top. So I'm just picking it up, dabbing off a bit. And I'm going to come up, so kind of look for the center of your flower, hover over your petals and kind of find where that center is and then start drawing your stem. I'm using the very tip of my brush um, and I'm just doing kind of these short movements. I'm gonna give the stem just a bit of a, of a curve, like so. I'm gonna rinse my brush off really, really well and I'm gonna, again, soften some of my stem while it's still wet. So to the left of the stem, I'm just going to wet the paper. I'm not touching the green just yet. And then I'll wiggle my brush up and touch just a couple spots. Again, this is a great thing to do if you messed up, if you feel like say, you know, an area is too wide, um, and just, just kind of soften it. You might notice that your pink and green have blended up here a little bit, um, which is great. I just kind of let that happen. There we go. So that's our first flower done. So before I move on to the second flower, does anyone have any questions? 
Do you have a trick to make sure your stem is nice and slim? I feel my noise ends up too thick. What I do is, um, I really think it, it has a lot to do with how much um, paint you have on your brush. So it is really important to, when you pick up paint, if I go in, let me show you real quick from the back of this. So if I just pick up paint on my brush and go in and try and do a thin line, it's going to be a lot harder because there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more paint moisture concentrated at the tip of my brush. If I just tap off some of that excess, it just kind of pulls out some of that water, some of that like excess paint and gives me a lot more control. Also holding your brush a lot closer to the tip gives you more control as well. And then just very softly create with the very, very tip of your brush, a fine line. I do find even with a brush of this size, I can get very skinny line work done. But that's because this brush does have a very fine point as well. So it kind of is a few things, but definitely make sure you're using your paper towels. Yeah, the silver black velvet brush is amazing. I've been using it for several years. They last for years too, which is great. Um, I only replaced this, I think last year. And the one I had before it was about five years old. So they do last. All right, so I'm going to move on to our next lovely flower. So again, I'm just gonna make sure my brush is nice and clean. You can see my clean water has gotten a little bit muddy as well, but that's okay. It doesn't look too bad to me right now, so I'm not gonna change it. All right, I'm gonna come back into our orange. Dab off a bit of the excess. And this flower, I'm gonna do a little bit lower. So I'm gonna do it right about here. And again, I'm going to just create this lovely, it's kind of dark. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water just to lighten it up. I'm gonna create my lovely kind of dome shape. Like so, and fill that in. I'm doing this one at a little bit of an angle here, kind of tilted diagonally to the right. Um, so just on my line, kind of in that way. Before I forget this time, I'm just gonna tap off the excess from my brush and then just use the very, very tip of my brush to create some of those little pokey bits that we did before. So I'm just pulling, let me zoom this in. I'm just pulling with the tip of my brush, some of the paint that's already on the paper up to create these very, very subtle kind of hooks, so you can see. Sorry if you guys can hear the outside. I don't know if you can. I have my window open because it was really warm in here. <laughs> so many kids in our neighborhood playing and I'm sure they're having a grand old time in this warm weather. All right, so I rinse my brush off and I'm gonna come into my lovely, lovely dark color. Again, stirring it back up so it's nice and mixed up again. I'm tapping off some of that excess and then I'm going to kind of create a line down at the bottom and round it out. And let this dark mix with our orange. Tap off a bit more and then just tap some of this into the orange as well, just to create some shadows. Rinse off my brush really, really well. This time I'm gonna soften some of the kind of the top of our lovely orange here. So I'm again just going to 
wet paper with clean water, come down and just touch some of this orange while it's still wet. And then I'm gonna move on to our petals. So this time I'm gonna make the petals a little bit more pronounced. They're not quite as floppy, not going down so much. So you'll see some of these back petals a little bit better. So I'm gonna start with these shorter kind of petals. And this part of my paper is wet. So you can see the pink's just kind of blending into it. That's okay. Move on to the next one. So I've kind of come further up the side this time to the orange before I start flopping the petals kind of around. So again, I'm just drawing the tip of my brush one side and then connecting the other to create this kind of long petal shape. Picking up a little bit more paint as we go. Creating these lovely long skinny petals. I occasionally leave little white gaps in the petals, again, it just creates a little bit of like a highlight almost. And coming around to the right, I'm again, because these ones are a little bit more kind of, um, not quite as floppy as say this flower. We're gonna say that you can see the petals a bit better at the back. So I'm, I'm creating some of these short ones um, here at the back too. Really kind of gives like a three dimensional look to the, to the flower. Add an extra one in here. You can always go back and adjust some of your your petal shapes, round off any ends that you're not happy with. Rinse my brush off, tap it off, come back into our lovely dark. And again, I'm just gonna drop a little bit into some of the, in between some of my petals. Not every single one. You can see that just adds a little bit of um, separation between them. But because it's still wet, it just kind of blurs out and blends, which is really nice. Again, I'm going to soften some of these petals here. Like I said before, this is great if you feel like you've messed some up. You don't have to soften it in the exact same spot I do. Um, say over here, you're not really happy. You can just kind of blur that out. I'm gonna soften this left side. So I'm just wetting the paper and then I kind of wiggle up to the petal. And just kind of let that, that color spill and blend and blur out. Again, I'm going to stir up my green. Tap off a bit the excess. And don't try to do like one whole solid line either. Um, I find to get like a nice fine line. I'm just very softly with the very, very tip of my brush, just kind of going back and forth in like a very gentle motion kind of like a flicking motion to get a nice fine line. Dropping a little more color in there. 
And then we can add some of our lovely greenery, um, just adding some kind of leaves at the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to start with kind of the, the tip of my brush just softly and then press down with the body of the brush and pull down. It's harder if you try and do it slowly, I find. You can also do it the opposite way. We could start kind of at the bottom with a full brush and come up and like flick away. Do another one, pull up. And as you're pulling up, you're lifting off. It takes a little bit of practice to get like a nice end. Sometimes it doesn't always work out for me either doing that. So don't be distraught if you're, you can always just kind of do some small flicks. And then again, we're going to soften, soften, soften before this dries. So if you're not happy, just blur it out. So I'm gonna kind of take some, I'm gonna soften my stem kind of in between my brush here. So I'm just kind of going round and blurring. And this just kind of helps like blend things together a bit as well, um, especially at the bottom here. Don't always love having things be really kind of hard lines. Um, so it's just kind of nice. I'm constantly picking up clean water as well because as you touch the paint, paint gets on your brush. So if you go back in, You'll, you might notice that you, um, you're you adding green everywhere, say, um, which you don't wanna be doing. So make sure you're rinsing your brush off in between blurring. And the thing about watercolors is that it is so easy to overwork them, to overdo it, to wish you had stopped earlier. So there's this thing called the 80% rule. They say that you should stop when you feel about 80% done. Um, so I know I could keep fussing and finessing and blurring and poking at it, um, but I don't think it's going to add to it. So I am going to put my brush down and stop. If you're still poking at it, I'm going to encourage you to also take a pause and stop. You can always do more later. Um, typically recommend walking away, getting a drink, um, before coming back and deciding if it needs more. But definitely stop before you feel completely done. And that should help prevent overworking your painting. But that's our lovely corn or cone flowers for today. Um, they were really, really fun to paint. I think they have just such cool colors. Um, just so summery. I just love like summer wildflowers and things like that. Um, so I would just love, 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 love to know how you guys got on with your paintings. In the second flower, how did you get the white in the petal? That's just a section of that I didn't paint. So I kind of, I, as I was kind of saying, um, as I was going around, I was kind of leaving little, um, not necessarily intentionally, but just if I did a line for one side of the petal and then did my other line to finish off the roundness of the petal, um, sometimes I wouldn't fill it in all the way. I'm so glad that you guys joined me for this live class today. I hope you guys had fun. If you guys, um, if you guys feel like it, go ahead and share it on Instagram. I would love to see how your paintings turned out. Make sure you tag me so I can see. I hope you enjoyed creating this painting with me today. You are amazing. And I'm so glad you took this time out for yourself. Remember, you can always practice these techniques and revisit this painting again. In fact, I encourage it. If you have paint left over in your palette, you can use it even after it's dried. Just add water. To clean your palette, just wipe off the mixing areas with a damp paper towel to get yourself ready for your next painting session. Creating more paintings is what's going to help you learn and grow in watercolors. I'm so looking forward to our next time painting together.